Hello everyone, I hope you're still having an excellent day. We mentioned that we are going to cover uh, at least one more game from round 4 of the 2019 FIDE World Team Championship. So here it is. Uh, it's uh, Sweden, vers Sweden versus Azerbaijan. Uh, Nils Grandelius versus Arkady Najdic. Uh, it's uh, really an interesting game uh, with a lot of things going on. And it's one of those games that you just don't believe uh, could, could go wrong, but they do. Uh, especially if you're playing the game. Uh, so without further ado, let's check out the game. I, I, unfortunately, I don't have any photos uh, of this particular match, but I'm sure we're going to get some tomorrow. So let's check it out. Uh, Grandelius has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now comes the bishop to b5. The Rui Lopez and knight to f6, the Berlin defense. And I know what you're saying. How could we have an exciting game in the Berlin defense? But, uh, well, uh, bear with me. Uh, d3, d6, uh, we have castles. And uh, here, bishop to e7, all standard stuff for the Berlin. Uh, rook to e1, and now black just castles. Uh, we have c3, uh, a6, pushing the bishop back, bishop to a4, and now rook to e8, uh, making room for the bishop on f8. Uh, so the rook can control the e-file, but also the bishop will be an excellent defender, as you'll see in the game. Uh, h3 by white, uh, bishop to f8, and now comes c4. And this has all been played uh, uh, plenty of times before. Some more notable games uh, are Sergei Karakin versus Basem Amin uh, in the 2016 uh, Olympiad in Baku, Azerbaijan, where knight to d7 was played. But also there is a game, uh, Alexander Grishuk versus uh, Gregory Kaidanov uh, in 2018 Isle of Man Chess Festival. Also knight to d7 was played. But here we have bishop to d7. So already uh, a surprise from the uh, uh, from uh, Arkady Najdic, bishop to d7. And now we have a completely new game. Uh, so it's black who surprised in this line. Uh, bishop to e3, white continues developing, and now knight to b8. Uh, hoping to trade off the light square bishop, and then maybe the knight can come, for example, to d7, to c5, uh, to e6, and control some very important central squares. Uh, with knight to c3, white just continues developing, bishop captures, queen captures, and now comes knight b to d7. Uh, now the knight is hoping to come to c to, uh, c5 with an attack on the queen. Uh, it also comes would come with an attack against the d3 pawn, which is a very weak pawn. And here white will have an opportunity to trade bishop for knight, which white doesn't want to do, as black's bishop is such an excellent defender in this line. Uh, and here you could go immediately for d4, but white first prepares it. We have a3. Uh, knight to c5 as planned, attacking the queen and the d3 pawn, so you can either capture or move the queen back. We have queen to c2, and now comes c6. Uh, rook a to d1, white uh, brings the the last uh, inactive piece into the game, and now queen to c7. The connecting rooks developing the queen, also getting your queen out of that nasty d file. Uh, and here b4, just pushing the knight back. Knight to e6, which was the knight's plan all along, now controlling the d4 and the f4 squares. Uh, and here white finally pushes d4 as d3 is a weak pawn you don't want you don't want it uh, e captures we have knight captures on d4 and now knight to d7 uh, asking white what do you want to do here now you could capture here let's say rook captures and go f4 this is one such idea uh, where you will be able to push f5 to control the light squares you have a dark square bishop where you will be able to control the dark squares uh, it is one way uh, to go but uh, Grandelius uh, finds a different line he goes knight c to e2 first uh, knight captures with bishop captures on d4 and now comes b5 uh, of course, uh, black wants, uh, if possible, captures, captures, then he would have a semi-open file for his rook. There would be a lot of pressure against the a3 pawn, uh, which uh, white, of course, does not want to allow. Uh, so instead, white just goes knight to g3, and now c5, again, uh, forcing white to, to decide what to do. Uh, we have b captures on c5, d captures on c5, the bishop must go back, bishop to a1, and now just knight to b6, increasing the pressure against the c4 pawn. Uh, so white is forced to capture. We have c captures on b5, a captures on b5, and now knight to f5. So here you can see that uh, the knight and bishop are really, you know, uh, working together here, going for the, the g7 pawn. Ideas like queen b2 are coming to really put pressure uh, against the black king side. So black has to, you know, watch out for, for these things. First, knight to c4. 
uh, guarding the, the b2 square, but also pressuring the a3 pawn. And here Grandelius finds a very nice move, rook to d3, defending, but also if black doesn't capture on a3, then rook to g3 is coming, so you kind of do have to capture. Uh, or do you? But okay, uh, in the game, rook captures on a3 was played uh, with rook captures, knight captures with an attack on the queen, and now comes queen to b2. Uh, pr pr putting pressure on the g7 pawn, also attacking the knight here. And here black has uh, either the option that was played in the game, but a very interesting line is knight to c4, just attacking the queen here and allowing uh, queen captures on b5. And after that happens, knight to d6, knight captures, uh, and now uh, you cannot capture. For example, if you capture with the queen, you lose the rook, or if you capture with the bishop, you lose the rook here. So here you have to go rook b8 with an attack on the queen, and after knight to e8, now if rook captures queen, knight captures queen, white is uh, still up a piece. Uh, queen to d8 now, uh, not allowing the knight to escape. And now preparing for queen captures, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, as uh, the rook is still attacking the queen here. So here white takes this opportunity just to just mess up a black spawn structure. Knight to f6 check. Uh, as you do have to give up the piece, G captures and only now move the queen, where you have this position where black has this, well, fairly strong pass pawn, and the white managed to mess up black's pawn structure. So this was one uh, possibility black had, but uh, Nidish went for a different one. He played C4, uh, which uh, kind of makes more sense. You uh, Now the bishop is protecting the knight on, on A3, and also the knight controls the pawn on B5. So uh, Nidish tries to keep everything in check. Uh, but, uh, of course, the knight, uh, the bishop is now overloaded, you cannot guard g7 and the knight on a3, so knight captures on g7, of course you cannot capture because it's checkmate, uh, so we have rook to c8, now black is ready to perhaps start pushing the pass pawn, which would be very dangerous, uh, first knight to f5, now white is already threatening checkmate with queen to h8, uh, there's only one good way to prevent this, and that is c3, this is what knight h played, uh, we have queen to c1 now, and now uh, if you try something like b4 here, just to illustrate what kind of a uh, powerful position this is for white, you can't allow queen, b queen g5 with check. After the king moves, you go queen f6 check, king g8, and now just rook to e3, uh, black is just falling apart here, there, there's no defenses. Uh, so, after queen to c1, uh, Nidic tried king to h8, not allowing queen to g5 to come with check. Uh, Grandelius did play this, it is the strongest move, now again threatening queen to f6, but now we have queen to e5, simply controlling the f6 square, uh, rook to e3, white just keeps putting on pressure, uh, uh, you can never push c2, to, you really want to start pushing your pass pawn, but for the moment it is not possible. So first b4, just uh, you know, increasing the pressure, also now the threat is b3 and b2. Uh, and here we have rook to g3, and this is the really interesting moment in the game that I really want you to check out. Uh, even feel free to pause the video here and try to find the, the best continuation for black. How do you uh, keep everything in order here, how do you defend? Uh, so, you know, there's no right or wrong move, I mean, there is a right move, but uh, I'm not, like, asking you to find a move, just, you know, f try to imagine you're playing black, what would you play here? Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent defender, because this move is really, really weird, I, I don't think anyone would play this, like, probably an extremely strong defender, if you gave him a lot of time, will find the move. Uh, but, you know, it's it's hard to imagine a human would play this. In the game, bishop to c5 was played, which really allows white to take initiative. The strongest move for black is actually bishop to g7, which seems weird because the bishop is, well, defended only twice and it's attacked three times. Uh, but the problem is, uh, now if white decides to actually capture the bishop, for example, queen captures, you get queen captures, Rook captures, and now white keeps his extra piece, uh, but the problem is b3. b2 is coming, and now after bishop captures on c3, you have to give up one piece to survive. Rook captures, rook captures on f7, and now uh, the game can still continue. Uh, black is not in time to, to win the game just yet because of rook to f8 checkmate, so first you have to make some room for the king, and then the, black, the white rook is uh, uh, in time to prevent the, the black passed pawn. And also, after a bishop to g7, if you try knight captures, then you just get uh, queen captures, rook captures, now again you're up a piece, but b3 is now just winning. Uh, there, you know, bishop captures on c3 doesn't really help you, and b2 is coming. So, here after rook to g3, bishop to g7, the, the strongest move, but 
I mean, who would actually play this? Uh, bishop to c5 was played, and this allowed uh, Grandelius to perform a, a beautiful maneuver. Uh, and that is knight to h6. And now you see the problem. The threat, of course, is knight to f7. This will be checkmate if the knight lands on f7. The queen is under attack, and the problem is, if you trade queens here, again, you have the threat of checkmate. You have to deal with this, for example, with rook to f8. But then you get rook captures on, g, uh, on c5. Uh, you lose a piece. So that's the problem with bishop to c5. But, I mean, who could... Who could know such things? So here, uh, knight h tried after knight to h6. Bishop captures on f2 with check. We have king captures and now queen to d4 check. Uh, we have king to f3 uh, and now queen to d1 check. And here, uh, knight h, uh, sorry, uh, Grandelius should have gone king to f2 and then tried to find, you know, some safe haven on, uh, on h2. Uh, he went f4. Uh, we have queen to d2 check and this is the problem with king to f4. Now after king to f3, uh, knight h repeat, uh, the, uh, queen to d1 check, but he should have gone for captures. And then just after captures, defend checkmate, uh, and uh, the game the game still continues. You know, b3, b2, still a threat. Uh, not, not for the moment you can't play b2 right now, uh, because uh, b3 right now, because c3 would be hanging, but let's say knight c2, the bishop doesn't really have anywhere to go. It would be, it would be playable for black. Uh, here, queen to d1 was repeated, and now king to f2, finally, uh, Grandelius, uh, you know, uh, gets away with the king. Queen to d4 check, but now queen to e3 blocking, uh, Grandelius does not want to repeat that king f3 to f4 walk. Uh, queen captures, we have king captures, and now rook to f8. The checkmate is no longer possible, uh, but here we have a beautiful move. Again, feel free to pause the video here, and, uh, you know, how would you continue this position with black, with white? Uh, know that knight to c2 is a threat, you can lose the bishop here, but even that, keeping that in mind, you know, what would you play here? Feel free to pause the video and try to find it. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, you have just, uh, you know, solved the mystery of why I even decided to show this video, it was actually this position uh, that really got me to like this game. Uh, here, king to d4 was played, and it's really beautiful because it, you still fall, fall for this fork, knight c2 check, where you lose the bishop, but king e5, and now after knight captures, king f6, and now whatever black plays, you're getting checkmated forever. <laughs> For example, a pawn to c2, now do you see the checkmate? Of course you do, rook g8 check, forcing black to take with the rook, and now knight captures on f7, a nice smothered mate where the king controls g7. Uh, beautiful stuff. Alberge, after king d4, of course, uh, knight h saw this, and uh, he decided to play f6 here, uh, not allowing the king to come to e5, but it doesn't matter. Here, king to d5 was played, and it was in this position on move 45 that uh, uh, a grandmaster from Azerbaijan, Arkady Naidic, uh, resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, whatever you play here, for example, you cannot push. Uh, b3 is just too slow. You, if you push c2, you immediately get bishop captures, rook captures, and the rook g8 checkmate. Uh, on the other hand, if you try some knight maneuvers, let's say knight b5, just king e6, and after knight uh, tries something, you will at some point attack the rook, and uh, the rook will have to move, let's say rook a8, and now knight f7 will again be checkmate. So pretty much everything you play here, not pretty much, anything you play here ends in checkmate, uh, where white just has this amazing, amazing position. Uh, but this is just the, the really fun part, you know. You're afraid of knight c2, and then you're just not a problem. King d4, you run into the fork, <laughs> uh, just king e5, and it's all over. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game, Nils Grandelius versus Arkady Nidic from round 4 of the 2019 FIDE World Team Championship. I did prepare the standings after round 4, so we don't forget, here they are. Uh, it's from the official uh, FIDE website. I will put a link in the description below so you can check it out. Uh, and also, uh, there you are more, more than welcome to follow the live streams uh, every day. Uh, in first place, Russia still holding with seven match points. India now with six match points. Uh, in second place, uh, United States with six points second place. England, six points second place. Uh, Iran, uh, fifth place with five points. Then we have Kazakhstan with four points. China with three points. Kind of hard to believe, but... Uh, you know, it's just uh, not not their championship. Uh, Sweden, with this uh, great victory from Nils Grandelius, uh, <laughs> finally with a match point, so in 8th place with 2 points. Azerbaijan, 
another loss so only one match point and egypt without uh, a team victory so far so there you have it uh that was the game i do hope you enjoyed it and that you are enjoying my short coverage of this uh, championship so far uh, i would like to thank russell lloyd dave bower uh, andrew slater informed and armin buch for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check all my previous videos here thank you all for watching and uh, i will see you soon with some more interesting content uh, hopefully you know continuing the Capablanca blanca saga che checking up on your suggestions and uh, you know doing what we usually do uh, so yeah, thank you all and have an excellent rest of your Friday.